It started so simply, as these things often do. I felt a weird stiffness in my right big toe on a Saturday morning as I pulled on my flip-flops. I simply rolled my eyes and hoped that a day walking around would loosen it up. It didn't. That night, the pain was so bad that even putting a blanket on the offending digit would wake me out of a sound sleep. I spent all day Sunday with my foot propped up on a pillow, feeling a bit self-pitying and futilely trying to ice it while dutifully mainlining Tylenol and Advil in the vain hope of fixing it. By the time I saw my doctor on Monday, the diagnosis was clear. You have gout, <laughs> my very old, unflappable doctor said, in the same flat, emotionless tone he'd used since I'd first moved back to San Diego, and inexplicably back to his same practice. I used to wonder if he had that affectless voice for everything. Birthday parties, bar mitzvahs, <laughs> bank robberies. But I always stopped before the scenarios got any more salacious. Tell me, have you been eating a lot of organ meats or heavy cream sauces? <laughs> he eyed my hipster t-shirt and weird glasses. Maybe lots of fancy beers. That time, the flat voice almost had the tinge of judgment just for flavor. What? N no. I'm a vegan, uh, for Christ's sake. And I don't really drink beer, thank you very much. That's when I found out that despite being the king's disease, and generally associated with old dudes in crowns, uh, lazing about while eating the entire Game of Thrones slash Medieval Times menu complete with tin cups of ale, gout uh, is actually largely genetic. Less than one eighth of cases come from diet. So all I have to say about this is, thanks a lot, Grandpa, for the crappy gout genes, thanks. <laughs> Although, thanks for serving in the military. You're very great. Um, so. <laughs> Clearly, however, over-the-counter over Advil wasn't going to fix my excruciating toe. My doctor prescribed prednisone, which was my first ever steroid. Uh, yay. For those of you who have never been on prednisone, let me tell you. It is way, way, way more effective than over-the-counter painkillers, and it destroys inflammation with a terrifying, laser-like precision. It is also like your Dr. Jekyll and decided to freebase Mr. Hyde's blood, so. <laughs> Side effects include irritability bordering on extreme rage, frequent urination, ravenous appetite, insomnia that will make you write a 3 a manifesto, and a sense of rippling power radiating all throughout your body without any productive outlet. Okay, so there's just one problem with all of that. That's regular me, <laughs> but like dialed up by a factor of two. <laughs> so if you haven't met me before, and I'm so sorry, um, I'm just as likely to wear a caftan, a jumpsuit, or a wrap dress after bench pressing 450 pounds just before I shove my face with whatever array of non-organ meats I can find in front of me. Prednisone was asking for trouble. <laughs> now magically, by my second pill I was cured. However, since prednisone is the dark product of an enraged powerlifting witch somewhere, you have to come off it in stages. And I was worried about the potential side effects. I mean, however, I just felt slightly hungrier, maybe angrier than usual. But how can you tell when you're already, by default, a little bit grumpy and volatile? <laughs> On my third day, tapering off the wonder steroid, I decided to celebrate by spending the afternoon at the zoo with a friend. 
Now, just being able to walk more than three feet would be an idle flex on my intransigent body. Honestly, I was astonished at how good I felt. Sure, I felt a little breathless, a little sweaty. But otherwise, I was a champion! My foot didn't hurt anymore. I felt incredible. I felt amazing. I mean, I had to pee every 11 minutes, but otherwise, I was golden. <laughs> I mined my way into the zoo and walked at a brisk pace. Look at what my feet can do, I thought loudly and smugly to myself. Fuck you, Gauto. <laughs> That's when I got a text from my friend to meet her at the Australian section, famous for its koala enclosures. <laughs> I walked jauntily onward. When I got there, waved to my friend, marveled over modern medicine, prednisone, and began scrutinizing the usual assemblage of sleepy marsupials, inevitably clinging to their fake ass branches and dead to the world. <laughs> That's when something weird started to happen. As I looked at the koala, <laughs> something changed. I looked at them and I felt rage. <laughs> Looking at them, all I saw were puffy, entitled balls of fur. <laughs> now I knew that koalas were frequently intoxicated from the eucalyptus that they consumed. I also knew that many a koala was also chock full of STIs, namely chlamydia, a particular scourge for koalas. And so I found myself looking at these sleepy, real-time Pokemon, perpetually high and riddled, riddled, with sexual disease, not unlike my roommate Dave in college. <laughs> and something within me snapped. <laughs> All I could feel was a blinding, all-consuming rage. <laughs> Look at them. Look at them, smug in their little ersatz trees, <laughs> sleeping. These koalas were dicks. <laughs> These koalas <laughs> were napping haughtily while everything went to hell around them, <laughs> around us. I hated them. Oh, how I hated them in the moment. Okay, so something about this felt very off, <laughs> very wrong, but I was on fire with rage. I felt my mouth whispering under my breath, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, koalas. <laughs> so. My friend, who was still standing next to me, looked up in alarm. Are you cursing at the koala? <laughs> she asked, gesturing at the fundamentally innocent and sweet animals that I was wholeheartedly defaming. I snapped to attention in that moment. I was suddenly aware of what the fuck I was doing and just how goddamn ridiculous it was. I was a full-grown adult cursing out sleeping marsupials on a Tuesday afternoon. And I couldn't stop. The rage in me was so 
trong. It was like I had soaked a bonfire that just kept growing and scorching and burning everything around me. I felt tears pooling in my eyes as I turned to my friend and said with a shudder, I, I hate them. <laughs> I'm just so mad at them and I don't know why. I just can't stop hating koalas. <laughs> my friend, wiser than me, raised an eyebrow. Because you are on rage drugs, baby. <laughs> Go the fuck home. <laughs> oh my god, I thought, she's right. <laughs> this is my brain on drugs. On dark magic witchcraft pills. I can't stop myself. I sniffled as I started to cry in earnest. My rage still directed at those motherfucking koalas. <laughs> and yet still ashamed at the whole event. I, I dabbed my eyes and I, streaming with fury tears, said, yeah, I will. Fuckers. <laughs> I thought at the koalas as I trudged away. So mercifully, <laughs> the tapering of the prednisone worked, and I returned to a less insatiably ragey human by the next day. <laughs> and that was it, the pinnacle of my bizarre gout experience, as I started taking a daily pill called allopurinol to stop me from getting gout again. Unfortunately, allopurinol doesn't always work. <laughs> I had another flare out of gout six months later. This time I recognized the signs, got the miracle steroids of power, and waited for the drugs to do their magical thing. But I realized I knew what I had to do as I tapered off, alternating between insomnia and nonstop pee breaks. I had to go under the influence and apologize to those sleepy, <laughs> slutty, Little eucalyptus junkies. <laughs> I had to make it right to the koalas. So, I went back to the zoo. Alone. No witnesses. I was terrified, anxious that I would snap again. Instead, as I cautiously picked my way to the front of the exhibit, I saw, to my immense relief, that I felt basically nothing. I looked at them. They looked at me. I realized that they were cute. I was just a full-grown adult looking at koalas on a weekday afternoon. Thank Christ. <laughs> hey, I whispered to the koalas apologetically, sounding vaguely like Jennifer Coolidge. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I was an asshole before. <laughs> Y'all are okay. Chlamydia, chlamydia. <laughs> now, of course, they didn't respond. And a mom with her two kids looked over at me like I was a grown-up talking to the koalas at the White Lotus. <laughs> Still, I'd done what I'd come to do. I had apologized. It was time to go home. I patted myself on the back mentally as I wound my way back towards the zoo's exit. I'd survived gout. I had not been a hateful AKA anti-koala asshole. <laughs> I'd fixed it 
Thank goodness, as I still felt the dark power of the demon drug surging through my veins. I felt like Bruce Banner after finally making peace with the Hulk inside of him, if this version of the Hulk was rightfully banned from Australia. <laughs> I was so busy self-congratulating, I didn't see the person in front of me, and I walked right into them. I bounced back and apologized instinctively as I slowly took in the figure in front of me. You see, I'd wandered directly in front of the exit from one of the many shows directed for kids that took place at the zoo during the week. And of course, I'd walked into a performer just leaving the nearby amphitheater. He was tall, really tall. And that's when I realized no, no, I had not walked into a tall person. I'd walked into a performer in an animal costume. <laughs> in a koala costume. <laughs> the goofy grin of his fucking mask looked at me, mocking me. The giant koala exaggeratedly waved <laughs> and put a friendly paw on my shoulder. <laughs> I felt the rage inside me rise again. I looked the freakish koala man in the face right in his masked eyes and said one singular sentence through clenched teeth. Baby Jesus is testing me and I will not give in today, koala fucker. <laughs> I turned directly on my heel, wincing a little bit on my still not fully recovered foot because gout and walked away from performers and from koalas and from zoos and from fear and from anxiety of a body that didn't feel like it was mine to control. But at least, I thought, as I gingerly pushed my churlish toe on the accelerator as I left the zoo's parking lot, I didn't punch out a full-grown man in a koala costume <laughs> this time. <laughs> DJ Tully!